discussion now. Okay. Uh, first thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, talk about the importance of the learning regulations and uh, welcome that. Have questions or Becker's here to answer any questions as far as anything anybody might have. Yeah, you know, I had some concern on a uh, commercial business C2, I believe. And, and I think maybe, and maybe they'd ask you about. One of the, either the new set or the old set, unless you can't have over five employees. That's the old set. Is that right? That's the old set. The new and they changed that that do, the No, because we looked for it, through it, and we could not find it anywhere, Bobby.
sure I'm saying this right, because I think they're the best we ever wrote for economic development. I've been very frank about it. And I mentioned to your planning mission that they're public hearing that. I learned a lot from you all by doing this. And because we were doing it during the time of the session, uh, you have an older community uh, that you want to keep growing. And so uh, your regulations are designed to be more flexible and have more discretion than, than we've ever done before. Uh, and so again, did that answer your question on that? Okay. Uh, if I find my, I know I'm in the room here, but I thought it was all the way up, so if I could get it off my back, it would help. But uh, first of all, some of you had questions as we went along uh, on uh, grandfathering in. And you have a number of properties that be that are grandfathered in, uh, even under your present regulations. Now, a grandfathered property is something that was legal when it started. Now, it may have been before zoning, or it may have been before, if you adopt these regulations. If for example, let's say that. Uh, Hypothetically, if your former regulation said something had to be set back 25 feet and this says 35 feet, all the people that are 10 feet out are grandfathered in. In other words, anything that has been, and I, I don't think there's many, I think it's the other way around, but I'm saying anything that would be made uh, not no longer legal, so to speak, is automatically grandfathered in, and they can remain that way, yeah, you know, indefinitely. The only thing that would ever cause them to go out, if they ever closed down for a year or so, and abandoned it, you know, went out of business, and where did the Then uh, they could not redo that. Uh, but the reason I want to mention it is that in this particular one, your zoning administrator will have a form that you can go, see right now, I'm very much aware, you know, I, I met with me around the city and so forth, and, and we study different things, and uh, certainly if I had some of the properties out of my, myself, I'd like to know, you know, where do I stand, you might say. Well, right now, you could ask Mel, I, I'd like a determination of whether I'm grandfathered in, and if so, what am I grandfathered in for? Now, if he calls me, I'll just tell him to write him a letter, you know. But he will have a form, and you'll have, and it'll check, you can check out about the questions that arise before he can make that decision. And he might come back and say, this is my grandfather in for this use, so that and so And then, he'll give you a piece of paper, and uh, you recall in the training session we talked about now you give it to them and what's the first word? You wish them good luck. But the second thing is you tell them to put it in your safe deposit box. It's as good as a deed. I mean, if you want to sell that non-conforming use or somebody wants to inherit it, you can say, put it in there with your will if you want to. I mean, when you've been determined a legal non-conforming use, you, you, that's it. And you only lose it if you abandon the idea. Now, um, it also provides anybody <coughs> the opportunity to apply if you had a legal non-conforming use and you wanted to expand it. You could come to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and, and it's a one-time thing, and say, I want to expand this and do this and that, and uh, the city or the planning commission might say, fine, but uh, uh, you're getting a little closer to the neighbors here, maybe you need a fence over here. Or you maybe need to combine parking over here. So in other words, you have the opportunity, which you don't have in there now, to actually come in on a one-time basis <coughs> with a conditional use and expand a legal non-conforming use that you couldn't do before. Just very briefly, the other things I was thinking is, all right, I mentioned you have fewer zones, and therefore, you have many more uses in each zone. It wasn't that it was cut back, in other words, each zone is bigger, so to speak, so that if you have a business and, 
and that goes out, or you want to uh, maybe uh, add another business to it, it's much wider than it was before. In, in all the business districts and the industrial district, you have a category, I, I wish it had a better name, but I call them miscellaneous special use. Now, Madam Mayor, we could spend the rest of the evening here sitting here and look over the list and say, well, now, uh, you remember when video stores came in? That wasn't in some of the things I did. It's just, uh, now we have, now they're in uh, red boxes, you know, the whole thing. So there's so many things that you can't really anticipate. And uh, you do the best you can at this point in time. Now, your regulations allow you uh, on something that you haven't thought about. If somebody comes in to the board of the planning commission to advertise as a special use to the neighbors as a, as a new special use. And uh, the planning commission hears it, makes a recommendation to you all. You have to wait uh, 14 days before you come to the council for any protest petition. And so you would have a decision uh, that you could make. Now, what's the advantage of that? Let's say that... Um, if somebody comes in and uh, they want to do, I don't want to use example X, that doesn't sound good at that, but uh, they, want to, they want to do something that's totally different. Now, what are you going to do? On your present regulations, Mel would have to say, well, we're going to have to change that zone to accommodate that use. So why don't you come back in about 55 days and uh, go get changed, and, and then you can apply. In other words, you can't apply for something that doesn't exist. And you know where they're going to be? They're going to be over in uh, Stafford. Uh, and I would say the same thing when I meet with Stafford. They're going to be over here in St. John. In other words, this way, you don't have to tell them to go away and come back. They can apply for what they, they walk in the door and want to do. You, but it's not, you couldn't have anticipated that you see it. And this way, so what this does, it is going to put more, what's a good word, pressure, burden, more responsibility on your planning commission and the governing body to make good decisions. Uh, simply because there's more discretion, and so therefore you have more flexibility. Uh, the other thing, uh, for example, the storage here, we're in the downtown area, and uh, you may or may not agree with me, but the number one thing that destroys the downtown, and I'll mention cities if you want to, is having private storage. Private storage in the downtown, over time, just simply, I worked in one that had absolutely 50% of the entire square footage in the downtown area was just over time allowed to have, they didn't have them at private stores. So how would you like to have a business next to it? Now, this allows you to have private storage, but you've got to come to the Board of Zoning Appeals and give notice to neighbors and have a hearing and decide that, not just automatically let them to come in. Now, those that are there now, if they are, I presume, their grandfather <clears throat> And then, uh, <clears throat> you have the most liberal, am I supposed to use that word here, uh, <coughs> uh, method of, of handling uh, vacant lots. I've never written it this way before. But you all taught me something. And I have another city that's interested in doing it. Okay? Because of you. See what you do? Uh, all right, vacant lots. Um, this allows people to literally come to your planning commission, notify the neighbors within 200 feet, and have a public hearing as to whether what should be on that vacant lot in between two in a resident in the R1 and R2 areas. And uh, zoning never intended to not do things, to just leave things vacant and put the taxes on that. And so they can come and say, I want to use this uh, storage building for some use or whatever it is. Now, 
the burden on you all is to decide what conditions would you place on it. And uh, that the wording of that is very important. Uh, you need to pin it down and make sure that it's going to work there and so forth. And uh, so if you have that, which is something you want to do, and that's in there. Screening. Uh, the screening before was somewhat automatic, so to speak. It may not much more discretionary. In other words, uh, you can decide now whether it's necessary to screen. When I was driving around your community, I got here a little early and drove around, and I was thinking about that. And uh, uh, I can guarantee you that the screening makes possible things that otherwise uh, you would feel more comfortable turning down. And uh, I know that uh, you agree with me maybe, but no, I'm talking about regular developers and development in the community never, never have been against screening and landscaping that we've ever put in place. Because they know it makes their opportunities better because they can tell to the neighbors that they're going to have screening and so forth. Now, the other thing it does is landscaping in the front. If you have residential districts across front, it requires a business or industrial area to landscape the frontage area to soften the appearance on it. Maybe if all the cars are backing up, lights and so forth, that you can put, and then use the word screen. This is the word landscaping. Now, for example, let's say you had a church in the residential district across from a business. Probably just say there's no need to landscape. But you, you can now decide those things. And the first thing it says in the list of the planning commission is, you know, is it needed? Basically, that's what it's saying. For example, if you had an alley and you had somebody with a fence across the alley, you certainly wouldn't have to duplicate the screen. It also allows you to delay it. <clears throat> Say that uh, you have some open area on the one end of your property, so to speak. Uh, you simply could, the planning commission would say, uh, there's just no need to screen this now. Uh, but if it's ever developed residentially, you'll be required to put up a six-foot screen. Walmart, in the first has that. Anybody ever built houses north of the supermarket wall? They, they automatically know that, yeah. That I got, I'm, I'm all, this, I'm, I got one more. Okay. Uh, all right, you're going to find this is less vague, and that makes it easier for your zoning administrator to enforce it. On animals, it simply says you can't have, uh, you know, um, boats and pigs and the whole thing like that. It is totally what you do in your animal code. Zoning is not a good place to, to handle animals, you see. And so you simply say, whatever you all decide to uh, handle that. Now, the thing that I would point out, I apologize for it, but I want to make sure to cover this thing. It's important to distinguish nuisances from zoning. You see. And, and uh, lots of times these get kind of intermixed uh, uh, and some confused. Uh, nuisances are not handled well by zoning for one of the reasons that a lot of them are grandfathered in, uh, in many cases. Uh, nuisances are based on health and welfare and there's no grandfathering in unless you wanted to do that. So I think it's important uh, as you go about the community that you define and this is zoning to do something about it, but these are nuisances and you have to code to do that. Uh, and any time you can, any time you can, uh, uh, you can uh, make, uh, there are two peaks, two, two groups that can uh, propose changes to your zoning regulation. Uh, if you, we, you know, we made a change for you all about this about six months ago or something. So any time you wanted to, if you found a problem, now reported to you, we've got uh, a problem here. Uh, the governing body can have a motion to direct the planning commission to hold a public hearing. 
and to consider a change to zone law. On the other hand, the Planning Commission can on their own start a motion to authorize a public hearing. Now, a property owner can't change your book, per se. They'd have to come and ask you all to do it. But any time you want to rezone or have a special use, the property owner can make those applications. Okay, sorry. I, put in okay. I, did, I did find in the Central Business District the five persons or more. What uh, page? Okay, C1. It's 4 7. You know, establishments employing not more than five persons in a construction business, such as plumbing, heating, air, electrical work. Right. Not, but not woodwork. Is it? Define that for me, make sure I'm, why, well, why you're so limited it. Remember we were talking about C24. So right, yeah. We were, we were, exactly. We're downtown we here now. C1. Now, <coughs> the reason this is in here, first of all, a lot of central business districts simply don't allow this. But on the other hand, sometimes when buildings become vacant or something, and people want to use them, this is a way to do it. The problem is, if they get too big, they really ought to move out and get more room than they have outside. They've got you know, two or three trucks in front. You see, when you, know, you get a certain size, it just kind of doesn't work downtown. You can imagine what your square would look like. Yeah. So this does limit it. Now, the reason it doesn't say woodwork. Uh, we learned by it. Do you, do you know, uh, do you know Bueller? Mm -hmm. uh, Bueller has a, a, somehow, they say, uh, it is probably, I didn't write it, it was just written in a loud construction or something. And they started a, a mill work. Well, the first thing it did was they had to have entrances. And so they started taking the parking lot to the main street. Uh, they had, I think they had at least four big, you know, big like garage entrances for the mill work when it's all so noisy. Uh, and so forth. So it doesn't bring people downtown to buy uh, a grocery store thing or something like that. So this is kind of a compromise to recognize that you could still do something but not get out of hand. Now, now, if somebody wanted to change that, if they had some reason to um, uh, have 10 or one group, well, first of all, whatever they have now, we grandfather in, unless it's in your current regulation. Okay, unless it's it it is. Right. If they wanted to come in, anything that is multiple here, anything that's a, uh, a number, it was fair game for a variance. So they could come back in and say, well, we really need eight employees. Uh, we have some parking in the back of the building that can accommodate them, and things like that. Uh, that you can uh, you can do that. But uh, again, if you found it to be a problem, if you want to change that, you can play. Is that? Mm -hmm. I just, heaven forbid, would want six employees downtown on the square. In one of these empty buildings. Well, we've got a community that, that we work for, and uh, uh, it's limited to five. And uh, when their building burned down, they had 15. And uh, they, they just couldn't handle the building anymore. They got so active, so they literally burned down three businesses in the downtown area, and none of it built back again. So, I mean, this is you know, some of the are not good fireworks. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's all I have. <clears throat> Mark, do you have anything? Amy? Troy? Bobby? No. It's not very business friendly. I don't know. It's my own personal thing. But I realize it's friendlier than the last one. I'm glad you said that. I was just going to say. I, I just it, look in here. It is friendly. Under home life. occupations prohibited. Yeah. We've got a man sitting right over there. We'll pick on you, Marshall. Uh, he does a little mechanic and he can make a little extra money in his house. Uh, if he decides to move, under this rule, he can't without getting special use. Yeah. Now, which? Uh, 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 which
Six, seven. What page? Six, seven. Under D. Number eleven. Okay. Yeah, but Bobby, you can still get a special use. You can get a special use permit. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying he's grandfathered in now. Yeah. But if yeah. you choose to move, then you have to jump through some hoops to get a special use permit. Which one did you use? D number eleven. Oh, on the next page. D eleven. Repair of diesel or gasoline. I don't know that he would have to jump through hoops. I mean, it would be anything, any, any different than anyone else if they choose to move and have a small business. And he's going to apply for a special use permit yeah. that's, that's granted every year. Is that not correct? No. 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 Okay, now, this lift, and this is your privilege to decide. Okay. If you look on the page 6 back, who is it for that? <laughs> He's doing it at home now, but if Bobby's saying if he decides to move to a different location and continues to do, wants to do what he's doing, then he would have to apply for a special use. But a special use is a one-time yeah, only. What, what do you do now? Just a little mechanic work on the side. You mean, well, what does that mean? I mean, fixing what? Cars and trucks. I don't know whether the zoning allows that now. What you have here under C, these nine things, are what notice the, the opening word, customary home occupation. If you go back even to the 1920s and 30s in the country, you find over the years that, uh, that if, I, if any of you mention something, uh, if you mention uh, uh, music teachers, everybody in this room knows that's a home occupation. So, it was a customary set of them, and there's a line out there. Now, similarly, it was a customary set that was generally prohibited in, in a, uh, now, the automobile and vehicle thing, uh, the state, uh, for example, if a person sells more than five cars out of a property and kick in on the computer and pick it, they're beginning to sell things and so forth. So, this can get out of hand, do you see what I mean? Uh, and now, now, if you wanted to, I, uh, I encourage you to change that. But, uh, and I thought of this too, that the only thing that really I could suggest to you that would make your regulation even broader, the only thing I thought of, driving for an hour or two so I had that much time to think about it. And that is that uh, we've only done this for the city yet. And that is to allow people to come as a condition use for, to decide a home occupation. And that would include any of these that are prohibited as well. Now, the rationale I'm going to encourage you to talk, you want to talk, think about later, but the rationale is that there may be a location that's very isolated. A person might own two acres or something larger. You know, uh, they may have a, a larger outdoor building that, you see me, that it just works there. You know, so. so that's the only thing. Now, the county has that. Obviously. 50 acres, 100 acres, you know, they ought to be able to do that. And they've occasionally have to do that. Now, we've only put it in one city, and uh, usually the neighbors aren't overly thrilled, you know, about it. So, I'm just telling you, that's the only thing that I can think of that doesn't make it even more flexible than, than it is now. Okay. I know we talked about it the other day at the the other meeting, but on the special on 11.7, under your special uses, yeah. first sentence in the last paragraph says, no special use proof, approval by the governing body shall be valid for a period longer than one year. That's, apply, that's applying for the first time, Troy. But, I mean, it doesn't, they don't have to do that every year. 
That's just for the and first... And once they get it granted, it's granted. So yes. It can't be revoked. Unless they don't do what the stipulations are for the yes. special use. And, or they sell the property. Yeah. If somebody to wanted to do the same thing there, yeah, they, they would have to apply for it themselves. Go ahead. You asked this question. Here, here's what it says. Um, anybody get the Rich Style Eagle here? Anybody listen to the news last night? Was the governor announcing the largest wind farm in the history of the state? Mm -hmm. And uh, the eighth largest company in the world appearing and saying we're going to build it? Okay, now, uh, that's what I'm working on. As of, if I'm not here today, I'd be back there getting ready. Now, uh, that is, uh, they've already been through in one session, and this is going to, it's been approved as a special use, subject to, within, and theirs is three years. In other words, if it's, if it's listed as a condition, you can make it more in citizenship in one year. So they were given three years. Instead of, they found Springfield, uh, Springfield, Missouri wanted the electricity right away, and they're going to start to build an $800 million wind farm beginning in November. Okay. Now, what, what, what it is, at the moment, that merely the special use is approved for that period of time. Now, let's say that uh, when they take out a zoning permit, and if they start to build a wind turbine, they're grandfathered. They don't need to ever come back. That's it. But just think about it. What if uh, the uh, deficit uh, committee working nationally uh, cuts out the subsidies that, uh, that's causing them to move ahead on this, do you see what I mean? And the result is that they don't build it. You don't buy a house there? I mean, if you see what I mean, that sits on the books for forever. Right. Yeah, I understand. So the idea is to make it go away if you aren't going to build it. And that's what that is. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes. I move to accept and re the recommendation of the Planning Commission to adopt the new building regulations for the City of St. Paul, Kansas in long code format by the approval of the ordinance number 1007. And direct the city clerk to publish it. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Is there any more discussion? You're talking about the first one here, Dan? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm not in favor of it. I'll move to approve.
And it's a slap on the face. Because no kidding. There, there it's is, a big uh, too. There's even people on that bill that think man should be so, better friendlier. So, so why wasn't they speaking up? Well, I think they were they getting hurt. So. Okay, so um, you guys didn't approve this tonight. Then I guess whenever they do go back to going through this again, council will be there. You don't. Know, Madam Mayor? Yes. One thing you may want to consider is the fact that if you adopt what it is, doesn't mean it has to stay that way. If you see things that need to be changed, we could bring that to the, camp, the, the Planning Commission and you guys could approve it. But at least you have something ready to go forward right now. And then if you see if there's things that you want changed, this is not set in stone. It could be changed at a later date very easily. But if you don't adopt these tonight, then it goes back to the old ones. Yes. And Jack sent the end, but I think it might be important to know. I mean, um, you have two ways to change this. And if you want to change, I mean, you, as of today, you have a 24 year old set of regulation. Right. Now, obviously, your community has changed something in 24 years, and something ought to change. But if there are specific things that you would like to include, you have two ways to do it. And one is to have a motion by Unanimous by uh, uh, by unanimous vote uh, to return it to the planning commission uh, for further consideration, and to do that, you do by state law have to tell them, you know, what you're supposed to do, you know, what you want them to do. <coughs> not, not a good idea just to return it, but tell them what you'd like them to do. Now, I don't know that it's the case tonight, but if you had. One thing that you thought had to be changed, uh, it can be put in the ordinance tonight, you see me, and that change made. It doesn't have to go back. So those are the two ways you change something. Uh, but as was said, you have a friendlier document. <laughs> I, 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 I'll stop, but I, I, I wish you all could see the questions of Mal, very good questions. And uh, it puts a terrible burden on him to interpret things and, and make good calls, and, and they're not in there. And uh, I think that you need to be fair to him. Uh, remember, your zoning administrator is not liable for making a mistake. But the city still is. And, and there are things in there. For example, if you want to build a public building, in your board, in your uh, industrial district right now. You know who decides that? You all don't. If you wanted to build a sewage treatment plant in that I-1 area today, your zoning says that you have to go to your board of zoning appeals, which makes the final determination. And never, that's how badly it's written. I mean, that's amazing. I'm just giving you one example, but I promise you. Okay. Zip. Thanks, Kathy. Okay, Don. Where do you want me? Here or up there? Yeah, yeah. Wherever you want to be. Yes, you know. Thanks, Bickley. Be careful one I'll help you out. Try and take this. Or is this? Yeah. This is a short Yeah. Pass these down. There's extras out. Just look at that.
Yeah, go ahead, Don. Okay. I'll ask you, this is the plan that we've come up with for our current, what I think is our current project. Do you want to talk about it first, or do you want to talk about some of the things that were brought up at the public hearing before we talk about this? Or, you know, or, are we assuming that this is what we're going to do, or... Yeah, I'm not sure where you want to go. Do we want to talk about individual units tonight, or do we want to wait on that, or... Council. Can you answer his question, please? Well, my thoughts are, and not, it might not have anything to do with you, but the piping of the water to that lot, I would like to see move forward very rapidly and drill three new wells or four new wells. I'd like that to be done, you know, ASAP if you could, but I don't know. Well, we got to make sure we get the money first, dude. Oh no, I mean, I think we need to do it whether we get money or not. Where you going to get the money? Yeah. We have it. Oh, okay. We can petition for a million and eight of CDs. Oh. No, Kevin, wait a minute. Don't be talking before you talk to city clerks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we spent over $20,000 in testing those wells, and they found some good water down there, yeah. 100 feet. And I just like to see him drop the pump in there and get the pump in it and see what it can do. Okay. Um, if you do that outside of what we're what are, we've been planning, you're going to lose your thirty percent loan forgiveness. I mean, if you do that on your own, you won't get any of that at all. Uh, it still has to be. I still have to. Be, uh, Draw plans and steps, and they all have to be approved by KDHE before we can do anything. You yeah, can't be pumping in low nitrate water. That's no, good. uh -uh. No, you have to, in, anytime you're a, a, a municipality, anytime that you want to have a well, you, it has to be done the KDHE standards and approved prior to it. And so, if you, just, if you said, okay, we've got the money set in here, Let's go tomorrow. You can't do that. It still has to be approved by KDHE. <coughs> so, you know, I guess... Even if you're not borrowing their money. Even if, yeah, it doesn't make a bit of difference if you're borrowing their money or not. You're a municipality, and what you have to do is everything has to be done in accordance with KDHE's regulations. You have to, you know, if you drill a well or put in your in anything, you have to do it in accordance with KDHE regulations. One thing, we still haven't gotten our final results on that test well yet. <laughs> that has to come first to see if that would be even approved for percent of use. That hasn't happened yet, so we're still waiting on results. Yeah, I guess where I'm going is, where do you want to go? You know, do I go forward with this plan? Do you want to have another public hearing to discuss discuss other options or what do we want to do? Now, do you want me to just go home and forget this or? No. <clears throat> now, this is the routing that Mel and I have come up with. We have tried whole bunches of different options and this is where we where we are at this point in time. Uh, this is the cost estimate that I have come up with based on this routing here uh, that if we're, if we're going to get funded with uh, through the revolving loan, we need to be moving. We turned our, the loan in for 3.1. Yeah with the idea that there was extra involved in there. And now our projected cost is almost three two over three two. Okay now the three two includes, if you'll look there up a couple of lines, there's contingency. I got two hundred and forty eight thousand of contingency in there. Which really doesn't do anything for you. What I've tried to do is on my 
cost estimates up here, come as close as I think I can. I try not to make it exceptionally high in contingency covers if I'm under. Okay? So if you subtract out my contingency, you're under the 3.1. Now, how KDHE works on this is, okay, and let's, let's just say I every number I had in here was perfect, okay? And that the total cost was the 3.271 million, okay? That's how you would get a loan for it, is the 3.271. Then, when they go to figure your payback, they subtract off the 30% of the construction cost. You have to take, it's, it's strange the way they do it, because they're not allowed to give you a grant. All they can do is give you loan forgiveness. So you have to take out a loan for the whole amount, but you don't have to pay the whole loan back, is what it amounts to. So if you go to the bottom line there, that's what you'll have to pay back, is the 2.5. And that's only if it makes it to yeah. 3.2. <coughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they will... When, when we get to that point, what I have here will make absolutely no difference. You know, they take the bids, the actual bids, and they say that's what they give you 30% of. You know, if I'm way over or way under, it won't make a big difference. Well, that one earlier when we were looking at it, well, like when you and I were talking, John, one evening they, uh, the day in the deal, we were taking... Uh, 30% of the total deal, and that's only of the construction. Correct. Yes, it's, yes. Which drops the amount of forgiveness by quite a bit over on the 3.1. Yeah, yes. Yes, yeah, you don't get the full 30% on the 3.1. It's right. only on the construction cost. Yes. So, do you want me to go forward with this? We don't want to have to, but we, we have to do something. This, I don't know, three million dollars, I just don't think this little old town can swing it. But this like two hundred sixteen thousand dollars on your west well, you know, I would X that for now. Bring your three wells in. That's it. I mean, I'll do whatever you want to do. I don't, yeah. you know, that's up to you. But I thought your West Well was one of them that was bumping the limits. Mm -hmm. And if it's over the limit, pretty soon they're going to shut you off and they won't even let you pump it. I have two towns right now that KDHE's come in and whacked out a section of pipe on their wells and says, there you go. But that's the same as the South Well. It's the highest. But it's on yeah, the other stand yeah. line. And the only way we can use it is we got a fire or some other emergency. It's not for normal everyday use. The east and the west well are the ones that we have went over limits other than the south well, which we're not really counting right now. And we just sent out letters here the other day because we went over. We had several letters for the public. Two. Do you want to discuss? I mean, I've done some research on some of these things. If you want to discuss it now, that's fine. I, you know, that's up to you. Yeah. Tell me what you want me to do. Just going in debt, you, did you read the letters? Or? Yes, I got both of them. I got actually three of them. So. Going in debt just seems to be the American way, and I'm trying to get out of that. It's a huge debt for 20 years. If, if somebody will actually buy the water, well, there's a large concern from a lot of the people that I've talked with that have said that we're going to be filtering this water. How much of that are we actually consuming? A very small percentage. You know, and that's what they're they're saying. We're paying all this money for it, and they're we're only consuming a small amount. That's you know, and they're worried. They're worried that you know we're going to be paying all this money. And I can see their point. Um, I've had the same comments, Mark. Okay, now, I'll tell you, 
of this, I'll bring this around to the individual treatment units because that was something that was brought up quite a bit. Um, you know, somebody said, oh, $200. Well, we've been looking into it for another town. The estimate that we're using is $1,200 per half penny. Yeah, you can probably buy a $200 one. I don't know if you can get it installed for that. But if you want to buy something that cheap, now remember, this is entirely up to the city to maintain it. Not up to the people at all. You have, I think, 600 and about 670, 680 connections. The care home, you'll have to put one in at every sink. The school, every water fountain there is. The restaurants, if they have a pop machine, you have to treat every bit of water there. So I just used 800 units that you're going to have to buy. That was just my guess. Because you got you have to treat any place that anybody in St. John can drink water, you have to treat it. The other part, another part of this that I really don't like, and I think you would really, I mean, the whole thing's a nightmare. KDHE, I don't know if they let you do it. But if they did, you will have to become the Gestapo police. I can about guarantee you there's going to be somebody in St. John that says, I'm not going to let the city come into my house and put one of these in. But you will have to force them to do it. You may have to have a policeman there with a gun when you put them in the house. Just something to think about. You will not have the option of letting yeah. somebody right. say, I don't want it. Yeah, they have the option. I mean, I'm in the city and I don't have city water. Right, and that's what you will have to do. That's their it's, only option. That will be their only option. As long as they're connected to the city water, you will have to put it in. You will have to enforce it. Now, the ones that we've looked at have a filter on. Sometimes it's, they recommend you change the filter once a year, sometimes even twice a year. That will be the city's responsibility. That means you're going into every single residence in this town once or twice a year to change that filter. You cannot let the individuals do it. Because what happens if they forget and all of a sudden they got high nitrates? They're going to sue you. I mean, individual treatment units sound like a neat thing, but it's a nightmare. Yeah, the restaurant has to have a huge one. A huge one. The other part of this is, is these small units, RO units, takes about six gallons of water to make one gallon of water. Your, source, your city sewer system is already overloaded. You're instantly going to have to add a 15, 20 acre lagoon out here because of all the extra water that's going to come to it. Now, like I say, I, I figured 80,000 a year just to change the filters. You know, if we build a treatment plant and you're treating all the water, we'll monitor the nitrates every 30 minutes, 24-7. And if it goes over the limit, it sends mail a warning. You know, it will call them out and say, boom, high nitrates. You get one of these little units that has a problem, it may be three years before you know it. You know, at the last meeting, there was an individual there who said that his wife had kidney stones that, that they thought maybe came from the high nitrates. You're going to have everybody in the country say, I got a problem, and it came from that unit. And you won't have any way of being able to say, no, nah, I didn't. Now, I, mean, I understand completely what you're saying. We're treating a whole lot of water that does not need to be treated. Right. But I've been through this, and I have not found another way of doing it. Now, the individual units, like I said, they sound good. We're only going to treat what we drink. But it's a nightmare. Well, let me, just let me be clear. I'm not against the water treatment plant. Right, yeah. I'm just concerned for everyone who's voicing their concerns. And that's what I'm trying to answer why I don't, I'm not for individual treatment. Um, yeah, I'll be glad to, you know, if you want to have a public meeting, I'll be glad to come back and talk to anybody about this. Well, didn't we decide we were to have one after the loan papers and everything was finalized? Yeah. Yes, we did. We were going to have another one anyway. Because when you do the application, you have to give a couple of other options, correct? Well, not not really, but I will. Okay. But yes, yeah. 
And so I think that's what they were talking about is maybe having those options available to the public at that time. Yeah, now, if you're waiting until you've done the, the loan application, what's the point? Now, if you've already made the decision, you're educating the public, but at that point in time, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I'll do whatever you want to do. Uh, do you want to go forward? What do you want to do? I don't, don't, don't see any other options. Yeah, I want to go forward with a, a million and a half. <laughs> Which million and a half do you want to need? Well, I think you need to put water restrictions in. I mean, a lot of towns do that. Is that not a lot to haze? And well, but that doesn't have anything to do. Water restrictions aren't going to help you here at all. That does not. That, that does not to do. It. That's if you run out of water. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm, I'm saying you would cut your gallons per minute back on your nitrate plant. Oh, make a smaller yeah. plant? Yeah, cut it back. Well, now it's this no, summer... No, excuse me. I don't want my water cut back. If I want to use as much water as I want to put on my yard, I'm going to do it. What? You also said we were going to get thrown in jail. And we've researched that. That's not going to happen. I'm not well, talking about not putting a nitrate plant in. You're talking about resisting me on how much water I can use. Yeah, there's a lot of talent to do that. That is if they're running out of water, Kevin. Yeah. You know, that has nothing to do with the nitrates. We more about water, you more about money. I mean, I don't think that's. The I don't issue think here. you're. I don't I think, think we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, I'm saying if you restrict their water usage a little bit, your gallons per day or gallons per minute. I'm not sure. Either one. Uh, it's just. I'll tell you, when you do this and you raise your water rates to make your payment. It will be the same thing of restricting people. Yeah. Because when their water bills go up, everybody's going to use what, less. Everyone's money. already talked about with the water rate going up right now. They've already talked about not watering your lawn, not doing certain things. So I mean, and that what will happen, happen it is that when you first raise your rates, the water use will go down, but then the next year it'll come back. It will come back up. Heaven forbid, don't let this city move forward just a little bit and make yourself look good. I truly believe if we don't move forward with this, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass in five years. I'm not kidding. Because Kevin, you know what happened two years ago? I mean, Troy wasn't on the council then, and neither was Mark. But you know what happened two years ago when this was brought up? You put it on the back burner, and things went up a whole hell of a lot. Am I right or am I wrong? I don't know. I am right. <clears throat> yeah. I am right. So what does council want Don to do? Move forward? I think we need to move forward. I'll say this much. You have a 30% loan forgiveness right now. There's a chance that it may be there next year. But the way the federal government is cutting programs, I think that the chance next year is the last chance that you will have to ever get any grant or loan forgiveness. And that's a 30% increase right there. We can't afford to not take advantage of this. We can't. There's not another option. You need to look outside the box. We've been really? outside the box many, many months now. Yeah. I so just what is the box? As much as I can, I don't see any other option. I don't like it any more than anybody else. I don't want to have to pay any more than anybody else. But I don't see any other option. Um, I've thought about everything that you've said about the RO systems. You know, I've looked at both. I've weighed both of them on there. It just doesn't seem... It sounds good, but it doesn't seem like it'd be something feasible. Exactly. I mean, I talked to the guy from KDHE this morning. I said, you would, you were brought up to a public meeting to do individual treatment units. He said, how many meters do they have? And I said, oh, 600 and something. Holy cow! He says, 
I don't even know that KDHG would let you do that. How could you even begin to maintain that? See, that's, that's it. Yeah. It would be. It, does, it just, it has, just it makes no yeah. sense. It, you know, it sounds good, but it would be a nightmare for whoever has to take care of it. Now, I felt pretty good after the meeting the other night. I mean, I think things got started off on the wrong foot. But after Don was allowed to make his presentation and everyone had their answers or their questions answered, I felt like people were pretty understanding of the situation. I think most people walked away from there just wanting, they understood, they just wanted more information. They wanted to be kept in the loop. Yeah, from, the majority of the pe from the majority of people that I've talked with, that's all they really want is to be told what's going on. They want it, and, you know, I, I tell them, we haven't hit anything. The comment that Don made was, um, yeah. how much do you pay for your cable TV? How much do you pay for your water? Which well, you would you have, rather have? Which would you rather have? I mean, you have to have water, but people are paying ten times that for their cable TV. It makes no sense. And so you all think that uh, if you put this plan in, it's forecasted 20 year payout. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. That you're actually going to collect enough money when people start Mark mentioning everybody's going to cut back on their water. Do we have that penciled in, that little buffer? But we, yes, when Rosemary figures your rates, we will put in everything and, and that will be part of it. As part of this uh, project, it, it, I didn't, that, it's not broke out separate of the chart, but I have to do a final plan of operation, and you get the, you have to do that, and you get the seventy five percent done with the project. And at that point in time, we're pretty much we're going to know how much we've spent on everything. You're pretty well along, and then you figure out, okay, there's, this is this is how much your loan payment's going to be. This is how much your O and M costs are going to be. Now, this is how much your labor costs are going to be. Now, I will come up with your yearly cost to the whole water project, okay? And then, based on the number of gallons you sell and the number of meters you have, we will come up with a water rate. I say, that's what you will have to charge at that point in time. Yeah. I can tell you... And I you didn't said in here the other night and told everybody that the water rates had already gone up. No, that that the first, you guys passed it to the first of the year. Right, right. But what I'm saying though is, now you're saying they could even go higher than what we got them at right now? I have no Based idea. Based on what whatever you, you come up with? Yeah, I have no idea what your rate, water rates are now. I didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, we will, when we get to that point, we will figure it up. And that is part of this program, is that you have to charge enough to make your operating expenses and your loan payment. Which she figured. Well, that's what Rosemary took our numbers and tried to come yeah, up with. Yeah, it, it should be, I would think that it would be very it's pretty close. close. You know, again, and it was based on my first cost estimate. And, and I'm not that far away now from what we were then, really. But except that I don't think then did we have the loan forgiveness in. I don't know what yeah, was, she had did she, money. okay. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, we will have to come up with a cost based on the actual numbers. Well, when you say, uh, well, I don't even guess, when you say you're moving, whether you want to move forward or not, what are we even arguing about? What are you going to do when you move forward here? I mean, just go through with getting estimates and that kind of stuff? No, no. What I'm saying go forward is, okay, I will start filling out the paperwork and get it in, do the preliminary engineering report and get it into KVHE. We have to do the environmental reports. We have to do all of those things before we will even have a, a chance at getting the loan. So that's what I will do. I will start on getting all of that done so that you can get your loan money. Until I get all of that done, you're not going to get a loan. Well, I actually thought that's what we... You signed the loan well, agreement. You signed the loan agreement. But all of this other stuff has to be done as part of that. As a small nominal fee. No, it is part of the design no. fee. 
Yeah, I have been sending you bills for art as we go along, all right. but all of that, when when we get it done, will be taken out of the contract amount. It won't be in addition to that. It will be part of that. It's a percentage of the job cost. Correct. Which is typical. Is yes. I think that was explained to Walt Barrett. Yes. 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 I mean, that is. And I'm tired of. Having of this board acting like everyone's out to screw us because that's not what's happening here. I, that's the impression I get is that every time we sit down and try to make a big decision, we always step back and think, oh, no, they're out to screw us. We can't do it. A perfect example was just what we did earlier with Bitly. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. It's irresponsible of us as a council. So, council, you want Don to move forward? So I don't see any other options. I move that we allow Don to move forward on this project. There's no way this is going to work. It just won't work. We just, we, we, just, we just can't try it until after we are approved for the loan or not approved for the loan. Is that right? Well, hey, if you, you're talking about drilling the new wells. Yeah, you can do that. I wouldn't guarantee you it would work for a month. It may. It may work 20 years. I have no idea how long your wells are going to stay where they are. And if you have a summer like you had this year, then no, it won't work. You used the, you know, Mel's max day was over 500 gallons a minute for the full 24 hours of the day. You don't have enough water to blend. Well, once I'm wrong anyway, by the time we build the blend plant and get everything moved in there, our cost difference between that and full blown plant well, is marginal. Okay, now, you, if, Let's, let's just say you could blend. Okay, mm -hmm. you would have all of the piping costs. Right. But you wouldn't have the treatment plant costs. Right, you, but you're still going to have to have a building there. No, so your well, manifold system and everything else. Yeah, yeah I mean, you need something. So, so basically, right. you're, the only thing you're missing is the treatment, the, the treatment plant that's sitting yeah. there. Yes. By the time you go through and try and build the, the blending facility. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, you would save yeah, some money. Doing the whole thing or a blending plant, I got might as well go ahead and just plan on doing the whole thing because you're not going to save enough money to. Yeah. It's a small margin of the total. You know, and I. Oh. Well, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. There's a motion on the table. Was there a second? Second. Okay, so any more discussion? I would just say that I really appreciate Bobby and Troy crunching the numbers and trying to figure out how to get this thing worked out. And that's something that we didn't mention in that meeting the other night, is how much time and energy you guys have put into this trying to make sure it works. I'm not... I'm just really frustrated that we've come this far and now we're trying to put the brakes on the field. I don't think anybody's... Personally, I'm not trying to put the brakes on or sit here until Dawn and he's, he's trying to stick it in our backside. But it's a simple fact of just taking the time to look it over and not jumping just because... But we're running out of time. That's the thing. The this, well. Like you said, this yeah, next this, year. This isn't my deadline. Right. I, I understand no. that. I understand that. It may not be available after the first three years. Okay. You know, and that's what scares me, is that right now we have that loan forgiveness. And that's why I'm saying this is the time to do it if we're going to do it, because it may not be there again. And construction costs are just going to go up and up. And so that's what, that's what I feel like it's an urgent matter. But I completely understand why we're concerned about it, too. I just want what's right for the community. And we put so much
much work into it at this point. All those in favor just say aye to have Don move forward. Aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Thank you, Don. Thank you. And so this is the plan that we will proceed with. Okay. Well, did we ever figure out uh, as far as if, if we have the city crew do certain parts of this project? We do that. Remember what no. Rosemary told you the other night? I thought there would just be certain parts of, like our labor, we couldn't put on a 30% forgiveness or whatever. Yes. That the materials and everything else would still if, be able to go on a 30% forgiveness. If you bid it in accordance with the KDHE procedures, then right. the material can be included. Yes. Right. Just labor not our labor. Not, yes, that's correct. Okay. okay. Don, one last question. Uh, had a uh, member of the community ask me one question regarding um, the the water pressure, especially in regards to the fire department. Is that going to change throughout the city? Uh, I, I was saying no, and that's why we're bringing the big line back in. Um, as, as much as I could say no, I do not believe it will. But it's possible that there may be a, a corner that is being fed from a well directly now that may notice it. But and if, and really, when everything is at static pressure, there will be no difference. The power will still be full. It would only be it's like if you live right next door to a well now, when the well comes on, you may have more pressure than you will when we're bringing it all back in from the treatment. But, but, as a general rule, no, there won't be any in change in pressure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Thanks Don. Mike. Thank you. Okay, Council, um, we need to have a do a public hearing. Informational meeting tomorrow, John. Well, that's up to you guys. That's what you kind of told them now that you're, you've decided on a plan in order to continue to. Do we, we need to stop Don and make sure if, he's, if there's any questions that he needs to be there? Or how long it might be before he's ready to present the plan in detail? I don't know. Maybe we'll visit we'll with him. With him. I mean, if we okay. want to have a plan, we'll just make sure we have all the information available. Very true. He may have some more work to do before we do it. to 
one that's got white paint around it, that's what it is. So we've already got marked out. So there are some of the ones that I drive over all the time. Well, Stradlin. Stradlin. Can't. It's in the center road. It's illegal. You can still Stradlin. Can't. It's illegal. Anyway, the amount is $2,849.80. Who is that through now? Uh, that's through uh, East Jordan Ironworks. I'm going to do Letting him have our motion to approve it. Second. Any more discussion? On the third side? Aye. Aye. All those guys say. Yeah, I'll be handing some pictures around. Some are in black and white, some are in color. It's pretty much the same thing. Out of the sewer ponds, we've got a dike out there that naturally holds the sewer water in, but it's got a concrete liner that goes around the outside of the water line. Uh, that's been in for like 46 years, and naturally there's, there's some deterioration through all this. And uh, This is another program I want to start, and uh, we'll do so much every year to get this done. These are some of the worst areas that uh, need to be repaired. And uh, so this will be kind of an ongoing project. Uh, this is a really great year because of, we haven't had much rain and we're able to have gotten rid of a lot of water through irrigation and everything. So uh, I solicited three bids for this work uh, on a per square foot uh, price, and I got two responses. Uh, first one here is from Smata Concrete at uh, $6 a square foot. And uh, next one is from Mansell Construction at 575 a square foot. And John also added, uh, there's no steel or rebar in this existing concrete out there, but he's added that he will put that in and drill it into the existing concrete to help prevent settlement. The only additional thing is, and we don't know that, and I couldn't tell until we get the old concrete tore out there, maybe a tow right along the water line that helps hold the, the bottom edge of the concrete. I'm questioning whether we have that or not, but that would be an additional cost. But his, his bid is 575 per square foot. So. How many square foot are you looking at? Well, yeah. right now we're looking at probably 625 square feet. So that's $2,750 basically at $6 a foot. So, you know, John, whoever you decide gets it, that would be fair for it. And $4,000 unless we have an addition.
see your family on the weekend. He's at Kansas City right now to uh, for the week. Uh, this week he's been training uh, until Friday. Uh, he's taken a, a three or four day training program. So uh, he's going right now. So uh, on a normal week, we'll be here all week and then go home on weekends. Is there any more questions for Sonny? Thanks, Sonny. Administration, John F. Uh, Kevin requested that the swim pool just be put on the agenda and we'll put in your packet. And you can see by years of employment, there are raises for two years. Um, the assistant manager is, starts out there and stays there. And um, the manager, that was his for the last couple of years. It was brought up to me why we don't start about minimum wage and why the price per hour is on the application when they apply. Things of that nature. I don't know if any of it's the way it is. Okay, so I would, I would think that would be something the manager would discuss with them when, when they yeah. interview. Yeah. yeah, we just hire the manager. You have to decide as a council if you want to do things differently. Legally, this is okay because we're considered recreational. And, and governmental, and so it's a summer recreational or seasonal rec recreational, so you don't have to pay minimum wage. Many cities are very much the same as we are. So it's up to you. You guys are the ones that said it in the first place, or somebody who was sitting around this table. <laughs> we did raise that, um, was it three years ago, I think. To this, it was lower than that before. Minimum wage is 705. 725. Right. So then I am good if they're there for three years or four years or I guess three or four or five the same. We don't have to meet minimum wage because it's recreation or something. That's what yes. John just said. What was the rule? Yeah, John just said that. And, and a governmental agency. Recreation, seasonal recreation. So our seasonal um, park person wasn't under that because he, he wasn't in the recreational category. Okay. So we had to pay him at minimum wage. So, do we pay Vicki the same thing as we do for a skating rink? No, that's a whole different contract. It is. I mean, but does she she gets a percentage, or does that does that that position that position is a percentage of the gate, okay. and then all the um, concessions. concessions, and that's the same way with the manager at this camp, yeah. all the concessions. But no, she's not guaranteed any amount of money. Right. Okay. So, council, uh, what do you want to do? Oh, do I have to decide tonight on no, the wages for next summer? No, I guess That's what I was going to just say. Table, table the yeah. motion. Have her ask, or ask the clerk to put it on the agenda in March or April. So when we start she hiring the clerk.
wellhead protection. Okay, I have met with Kansas Rural Water, uh, our county, and we're in charge of the process of reviewing our, our water protection, source water protection. So we'll be getting back with me and we'll be able to come into a council meeting at some point. Thanks. Centennial Fort Alley. Go ahead, no. Yes. Uh, I know at the last meeting it was decided to consist of the council that that is a public alley, alleyway. Um, we had uh, a question asked of us as of the complaint had been sent in a letter form to you guys a couple of meetings back and uh, requesting an answer to the complaint as far as uh, is the council prepared to remove the, have the existing rock removed because of the mowing problems, walking purposes, and creating a dust for allergy homeowners, or homeowners that have allergies, and or are we going to put any sand on top of the existing rock? They would like a response from the council on it if there's any intention to do this. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Okay. We have to ordinance. Take a lap. No. Yes. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye.